Alexis, me, for the very first time, Justin. Hello, Justin. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Okay, I'm Lindy. I'm Miguel. Nice Miguel, to nice to meet you. Deep breath. We got this. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. We got this. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. It's the Married at First Sight edition. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. It's the one and only Teresa. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? I don't know how everyone else is doing. Teresa and I are living our best life right living now. Living our best lives. Living our best lives right now. We are on vacation. Woohoo! With, Again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not all travel is vacation, Teresa. That's true. It's very yeah. different. Going going to Boston for a wedding, I would not consider not a, a vacation. Va- while fun, not a vacation. True. Okay. And check, that was definitely a vacation. That was mm-hmm. your family vacation. And now yes. here we are coming to you from an undisclosed location on the coast of Connecticut for my family vacation. Yes. We love family. We love family. We love family vacation. And and thank you to everyone who messaged us and says, guys, you can take a week off. It's okay. We'll we'll get through it without you. Well, three things. We won't get through the week without <laughs> doing this. We we love talking about it. And that's kind of number two is we just love talking about this show. So it's fun for us to do. And three, sometimes you, you need a little break from family. Sometimes you need a little mm. excuse to break away from the family activity and say, Ooh. you know what? You know, we have some friends who are counting on this podcast to drop and they say, what's a podcast? And then you spend an hour telling your parents (laughs) what a podcast is. And they're like, we don't understand, but go do what you need to do. Yes. And as John said, we would be watching regardless. So when you guys say take a week off, we would still be watching. (laughs) And then we would be talking about it regardless, but not recording. So it's like. Why don't we just record? It's a non-brainer. <laughs> the, the, no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. <laughs> the, the funniest part was, so we didn't watch it live last night because we were out to dinner with the fam and doing that whole thing. So we watched it this morning. It's Thursday morning. We watched it this morning upstairs in our bedroom on the iPad. And then we walked downstairs and my sister's in the living room watching Married at First Sight on mm-hmm. TV. <laughs> so it's a, it's a family affair. She loves Married. Over here. She loves, yeah. she loves math. Shout out to Rachel. Shout out to all you guys. Shout out to our patrons. Yes. First and foremost. And just another quick thank you for all you guys signing up. And we saw an influx of you guys coming over to the Patreon because, you know, the first of the month, the first week of the month, the first two weeks of the month is the best time to sign up for Patreon because you get charged when you sign up and then there's a reoccurring payment every first of the month. Mm -hmm. So the sooner you sign up in the month, the more time there is between that payment and the next one. So it's just a no-brainer. As Teresa said, it's a non-brainer. It's a non-brainer. It's a non-brainer. Whatever that means. It's a non-brainer <laughs> to sign up for the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. We got Seeking Sister Wife happening over there. Woo-hoo. Audio video. We just dropped a bonus of 90 Day UK episode one, mm-hmm. which is getting a lot of love. The yes. Sh- the show and our coverage of it. And a lot of people are asking Are we going to cover another episode of UK? We may. I think we will. I think we will. As a bonus, we may cover more than just one. As a bonus, again. Yeah. But, guys, if you are not into Seeking Sister Wife, but you're thinking, yeah, we want to support you on on Patreon, well, come over because Seeking Sister Wife will be ending soon. Mm. And we will be putting out a poll for our Patreons what we should cover next. Yes. And so if you sign up at any level, you can be a part of that poll. We will put our heads together. We'll all put our collective heads together, come up with a few shows to throw on the poll. You guys will vote on the show and then we'll cover it as soon as Seeking Sister Wife ends. So that's Patreon. Again, thank you to all our patrons. Thank you to all our friends. It's yes. amazing. Every time we see a new sign up come through, we're like, wow, this is, this is, we love love. We love love. And this is love. So thank you guys again. Also, follow the Instagram, no matter if you're on the Patreon or not. Instagram is its own thing. It's got its own news. You message us over there. We'll post memes at some point again. So follow us at Married to Reality Pod <laughs> on Instagram. Make sure you're following us wherever you're listening right now. That's probably the easiest thing you can do to support the pod is no matter where you're listening, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Tune, and Stitch, it doesn't matter. You look down, you smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hot as... As Miguel's in, no, I'm kidding. 
as oh hard oh as Benz and Morgan's Sparkle Sand Off. Because. Your what? Huh? What? What? A the sparkle sparkle send off. Because that's what we had at our wedding. We sure did. And it's harder than the balloons we that sure. Miguel and Lindy had. And that's why I went for Miguel first. It was in my head. Okay. I was looking at Teresa when I, you know, not to pull back the curtain too far. Teresa's got a quite the Bloody Mary sitting in front of her. Yes, right now. and now there is a little pepper stuck in my straw, so I can't really. As long as it's not stuck in your throat, because she made this thing extra spicy. And it's a Bloody Mary that would make anyone on Below Deck proud. I think they would see that. There's no bacon in it. There's no shrimp in it. But I don't like putting bacon in my bloody. There's I this... feel like it could use a little more vodka. Oh, classic Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. It's right. very good. Woo! It's a bloody, a bloody Mary, speaking of 90 Day UK. John said... Okay, when you're drinking on the podcast, stop doing the sounds that it's very spicy. Spicy. Like, Every time she takes a sip, <laughs> she takes one sip and goes, <laughs> and I go, we can't do that. We can't be drinking spicy Bloody Marys in the pod if it's going to sound like we have a small dog recording with us. <laughs> okay, so you're smashing like it's as hot as that sparkler send off. No pun intended there because sparklers can be hot. Stay safe, guys. Very true. Sparklers, but but that was my favorite. I said the balloons, but I saw the sparkles. So I'm like, it's... It's it's an old time classic. It's an all it's an old time and all time. And it looks beautiful. I liked it. Yeah. All right. So smash it like it's that hot. And last but not least, if you haven't left a review, again, we love love. So if you could leave us some love, it goes a long way. It makes our day. It helps the podcast get out there. So please and thank you in advance. Yes. All right. That is the housekeeping. Let us get into this episode. An episode that I really enjoyed. It was good. It was good, but I think it's going to get better. Oh, wow. Yeah, better. Do you promise? I hope so. Okay. All right. Do you want to start with who I already mentioned, mm. Lindy and Miguel? Yeah, I have them first in my notes if you want to start Let's there. Let's start with them. Waking up in Puerto Vallarta, right? Everyone is on their honeymoons. Bin and now I forgot her name. Morgan. Morgan will be joining shortly, but for now, it's the other couple's. And Lindy and Miguel waking up. Things are still going strong. Sexual attraction is there. Mm -hmm. Sexual tension is there. And they start having some solid conversation. Here's yes. what I'll just say right out of the gate. And then we can discuss the conversation. Lindy and Miguel have maybe the best communication skills out of anyone who's ever been on MAFS. All right. It's so say. funny you said it because I feel the same way. And I, I'm going to say that. Lindy has a doctorate, right? I don't she know. is very smart. Yes. And you can hear it when she talks. She is very smart. She picks up on things. She knows what's right. But then she has her side of being crazy fanger, saying, yeah. oh my God, oh my God. And uh, uh, I hate that because I do think that she has a lot of potential to be a great girlfriend or a great wife, right? But she has this weird side of her that she gets too upset or she talks too much she's uncomfortable mm. she oh my god's everything and that's the side that i could not personally deal with and i think that's gonna be the side that will ruin their relationship that's unless miguel would be able to talk through all the issues and be very calm and be there and wait for her to calm down yeah that's the side i would say she needs to address dial back Woo. dial it down it's there's a lot of excitement, I imagine, in this process. And so you can't hold it against her that she's excited. She's on TV. She's in Mexico. She just married a man that she thinks is the man of her dreams. And so I get it. That's probably authentic because there's, and we'll talk about it, when it comes to Justin, I just go, this is inauthentic. His, he's over the top and it's inauthentic. I think Lindy is over the top. I think it's authentic. Oh, I... I 100%. This is her. This is her personality. But what I'm saying is that she is a smart girl. Like She's very smart. I've never talked to her, so I, I can't well, say. I can, just because just you have a degree doesn't make you smart. No, Teresa. no. I don't talk about a degree. I'm not talking about a degree. I'm talking about her conversations with Miguel. Yes. She's emotionally intelligent. I'll say that. Yes. Let's not talk IQ. Let's talk EQ. But I also think that her emotional intelligence fails her 
at times when she's not getting what she wants. And we saw in the previews that maybe Miguel said something and she's going to lose her shit in front of everyone else. Mm -hmm. And that's where the emotional intelligence fails her. Yeah. And you got to think some of that is, or a lot of that, is her super conservative religious upbringing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they talk about it in this moment a little bit. And she comes out and she says, I was engaged in college. I lost my virginity to this man that I was engaged. Which was to, against the rules. Which was against the rules in her faith. And he was also the only guy she told she loved. So this is a lot to put out there. And I feel like a lot of times I would say, this is too much. This is too soon. But when I see them communicate, they're on the same page. They're both sharing equal amounts. It's sober. They're not drunk mm -hmm. rambling. So I go, this seems healthy. Yes. And you say it's too soon. I agree, but I don't because nothing's too soon for them. People have these conversations before they get married, right? People have these conversations months in when they're getting to know each other and things get serious. For I don't know. Them, Let's call this a second date or a third date. I might be scared if I heard some of these things on a second date. Oh, I would not want to hear this on a second. I right. want to hear this like a year in. No, that's too far in. Really? That's way too far. At that point, I'm like, why didn't you tell me sooner? I guess. But if you're telling me I lost my virginity to this guy I was engaged to on the second date, there's not a third date. But if you tell me the second month after we've really spent some time and we've got past the what's your name, what's your favorite color. No, that's too soon. Second month, really? Yeah. Let's call it, we're going out twice a week, eight, let's call it 10 dates in. You think that's still too soon? Yes. Agree to disagree. I'm I just, honestly, and this might be a little one-sided because the only relationship I can really judge is ours because it's my only serious relationships I've ever had. Mine was my high school on and off relationship with my high school boyfriend, mm -hmm. right? Doesn't count. But that's the only relationship I can judge. And so just go by what we did we took our time. Like I didn't need you. I didn't need to know about your exes. And you eventually told me and it was months in. It was a right. year in, right? I didn't need to know about when you lost your virginity. Like, like we do, I don't just need to know. I don't think you need to know that either. No. And there's some things I'd rather not know. But th what they're talking about, again, seems healthy. Seems like yes. it's bringing them closer. They're bonding over. Miguel shares about his past relationships after Lindy shares about mm -hmm. hers. The thing he says that scares Lindy is that he's never gotten to a place of love. And so that he always ends the relationships. Well, he said he always ends the relationship because love is a feeling for him. And if he mm -hmm. doesn't feel it, he is out. Love is a choice for Lindy. We keep calling her Lindsay, by the way. Stop I'm it. I'm going Lindy. Stop I think it. I'm going really? Lindy. I, I'm saying Lindy. Is me, am I saying Lindsay? I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe I'm pretty, sure the, I'm pretty sure the first episode I called her Lindsay. Oh, 100%. But, but Lindy. Yeah, Lindy says for her, love is a choice. Like she chooses who she loves. Miguel I don't needs know to that, feel. Uh, I go I don't think feeling. you can choose. I don't think you can choose. No. You can choose to put the effort in. So in, yes. th in this case, you're married. You can choose to put the effort in to see if yeah. love can grow. But you can't just choose who you love. Love is a feeling. I mean, it's love is everything. It's the attraction. It's how you care for this person, how you feel when they are around or they're not around, right? Yeah. Love is so much Love more. is a verb. It's something you do. It is action. But, but, it's, also a feel too. but yeah. it's also a feeling. So I, think, yeah. I, I, I disagree. Yeah, I don't think it's a being able choice. To choose. But again, it's her upbringing. But during this whole conversation, you could see the two sides of Lindy within like 30 seconds mm -hmm. when she went from, oh my God, so when did you graduate high school? And he's like, 2003. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> oh my God, what? Oh my gosh, like, she, you're so old. And she's and he's like, when did you graduate? She's like, oh my gosh, 2011. And he's like, you're so young. Yeah. But like, it was like sarcastic. And, and she went from this like, oh my gosh, and you could see his face. He's like, what? Yeah, to, to these, I was engaged in college. I lost my virginity. It was so very like, But deeper conversation. Yeah. And you could see how she goes from being a total moron. To, I don't want to call it. We reserve the term moron for people who deserve it. Like okay. Bilal. I'll take and, it back. Yes. Okay, I'll take it back. She's a total fangirl. Yeah. Who seems very immature. And then like this. 
she is this mature yeah. person having these deep conversations that many people can't have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's, it, that's why it's very interesting to me. It's very to interesting. To see if they can get over, because I feel like if Miguel can get over what she's been doing or her smooth switches or help her overcome, help her overcome. It doesn't bother him because he wants to bang her first. So let's talk about that because we said this is great conversation, open communication. We love it. There's one thing Miguel told Lindy that I thought was a little too honest when he said there's a potential, there's potential for a spark here, but I can't choose whether I fall in love with you or not. To me, just saying there's potential for a spark here. Just keep that to yourself. No, I think it's fine. They were being honest. Whoa, I think he's what the, good comes from saying that? Well, that was his reaction to her saying that. <coughs> oh, Sorry, boy. Guys. It's the bloody. It's the spicy Bloody Mary. The Bloody Mary. The Bloody, the bloody Mary that right, was made by UK. Harry Potter. Save okay. it for UK. That's my British English. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm saying that was his reaction to... The fact that she said love is a choice and he said, I cannot choose. But he, so then just say that the fact that he goes, there's a potential for a spark here goes, oh, we don't have a spark yet. You're not feeling anything yet. But he meant potential for a, that spark, the okay. spark that you were like, shit, I love this person. Okay. That spark. Okay. They have a sexual spark. He's been talking about it. All, oh, yeah. He's been trying to bang her since uh, the we'll altar. Get to that, so they a... have the sexual spark, the sexual electricity Ooh. is there but he uh, he's talking about a love spark and i get that yeah so then they go to dinner and here's something therese and i take very seriously i said they go to lunch I, I had lunch at first and i changed <laughs> it because i saw everyone was going to dinner so i thought this must be dinner okay. Plus, so they do they do a champagne cheers mm -hmm. which i don't think is a lunch activity necessarily champagne Dude, on the vacation yeah there's I'll other do things it for to, breakfast there's other things to drink well i'll do a mimosa <laughs> but just yes. straight champagne Either way, yeah, they do like champagne. They on. do a champagne cheers. Mm -hmm. Lindy doesn't do the eye contact. Yes. <gasps> and Miguel corrects her. Oh, yeah. And thank goodness someone corrected her because Teresa and I take that very seriously. Very seriously. It's not did a, I if teach you're not, you that? that? No, I always did the look. But I know. am. No, no I've I, never met anyone who took it as seriously as you. Because it's a bad luck. And he says it. Like We take it very seriously. It's a bad luck. And it's disrespectful. Yeah. It's considered highly disrespectful in the Czech Republic. And I'm being very serious. When the person you're cheering with does not give you an eye contact because it just looks like, oh, they don't care about the cheers. And I hate when people don't do it. We th I correct people. Last night at dinner, we cheers my parents and they didn't look in my eyes. Oh, it's very disrespectful. I'll have I'm going to have a word with them if you uh, want to join your, me. Your dad didn't look at my eyes either. Come on. Well, we'll have a chat we'll, with we'll him. Have we'll have a chat. We'll have so, a two-on-one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll look him straight in the eyes and we'll say, Dad, let's do this thing right. You have to. It's just it's just yeah, polite. It's just, and certain cultures, as we see Miguel's as well, yeah. take it very, very seriously. Yeah. So again, back to the open communication, the serious conversation, Miguel's talking about his childhood. So he grew up in Queens until his parents divorced when he was around 10. Mm -hmm. He moved to Puerto Rico and he said, I looked the part, but I couldn't speak Spanish. So I was having this internal identity crisis because I don't know where I fit in. I am, but I'm not mm -hmm. like, so he had this, he had the struggle and he said he retreated a bit. That's where he became antisocial, started playing a lot of video games and read. And it was during this time, I think. And I don't know if they divorced, if his parents divorced because of this. He but, said divorced. Yes, I know they divorced. But we learn his mom has schizophrenia. Yes. So I don't know if that, that was the cause of the divorce. Well, well, I think what happened, and this is just me speculating based on what was said. Miguel said that... His mom abandoned the family. Oh, and I right. think she packed up and right. left. And right. that's how they got the divorce. Right. And he always took that personally. Yeah. As but, a kid, you, everyone would. Of course. But because of Miguel's field and his education, he started to learn more and more about schizophrenia. Yeah. Because of he has a background in neuroscience. Yes. And so he also did a 180. And instead of being mad... He started to feel bad mm -hmm. because he knew how he treated his mom and yeah. he didn't know what she was struggling with at that time. And so then he started to feel bad for her. And, and all of this 
is what has shaped Miguel to this point. Yes. Lindy shares some information. Her parents also divorced when she was in eighth grade. And she, I guess, left the house at that point, goes and moves in with her boyfriend's parents for a summer, I think it was. Yes. And that's where she saw what a healthy relationship looked Mm -hmm. like. She could see love. She could see how people handled and treated certain situations. And she saw healthy arguing. And when she said that, Miguel was so happy to hear that argue. It's not a negative thing. It doesn't That's have to be. That's true. I yeah. totally agree. Like people, you can have healthy arguments or discussions that when they escalate a little bit, you need to know how to stop them. You need to know yeah. how to talk through them to stop it before it gets into something crazy. And I feel like this is a very, very precise skill to have. But you have to be the two of you. Right. It's if one person doesn't understand it and goes a little farther, it's going to end up in an ugly fight. Yeah. I think the two most important things when it comes to a healthy argument is what are we arguing about in the first place? Are we arguing about something stupid? Mm-hmm. And if we are, let's not. Mm-hmm. And then two, if we're actually having an argument and a debate and something of importance, know when to stop it mm-hmm. and know where not to take it because a lot of people are ugly fighters. Oh, yeah. A lot of people get into an argument, dig their heels into the ground and take it to a place that it wasn't even intended to go or needed to go. And now all of a sudden we're just insulting each other for no reason. And that's that's when things get out of hand. Mm-hmm. So argue it up, argue it up, have your voice heard, but play within the confines of what this argument is about. True. Sure. And I think that's sort of where they were both going with this, oh, yeah, we can have healthy arguments and that's good. And again, great, just great communication, great conversation with this couple. No, absolutely. And then we see day four, day four of the marriage, right? Yes. Pool time. It's a pool. They're having fun. I had to dip in a pool after that to cool off. They're sitting in a jacuzzi that's not on. They went from a pool, making out yeah. under waterfalls. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to TLC. To a jacuzzi, to a hot tub? Yeah, but it wasn't on, which mm. bothered me. And maybe, I'm sure it was on, just the jets weren't blowing. But 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 Benny and the jets were No, not if you go to the jacuzzi, you gotta have no, the jets on. No, Really? You can just, uh, you can sit and just stew in hot water. You don't need. It's hot outside. Why would you do that? I don't know, but you don't need those jets blasting. Oh, you do. Out. That's the only reason I go inside a jacuzzi, to have the jets the massage my I'm with body. you. I'm with you, but it's not like it's broken if it's not. No, on. I'm just saying like sitting in warm water is just you. Yeah. So we see the sexual tension and we see the sexual chemistry and we're all wondering and thinking what's going on with this couple. And Miguel tells Lindy, I'm very attracted to you. The sexual tension is there, which confused me a little bit because a day ago he was saying, yeah, Maybe we can create a spark. Maybe we'll get to a spark. The love spark. The love spark. I told you. I'm telling you. Okay. So he tells her that, but then he tells the camera, so I've tried to make some moves and I was politely pushed away. But he says, and Therese and I both leaned in when he said this, there are other ways my needs are being met. I think she plays with his penis. With her mouth? But anything. Because this was the Clara Ryan thing, right? Where, oh, yeah. Right? Where they weren't having sex, but she was doing everything else seemingly. Yeah. And they would go around saying, no, no sex, nothing, nothing, nothing. But then on camera, yeah. or on the hidden camera, the Nest Cam, Clara was like, oh, yeah, giving PJs every night. Yeah. yeah. And that's what ruined their relationship. Because then he spilled the tea. Yeah. She spilled the tea when he asked her right, not right, right, to. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, I think she's just doing everything, but... They just go, what is it, second base or third base, first base? Uh, Europe or American rules? American. Third. Okay. What's second? Uh, hand hand play. Okay. Well, first is kissing. Okay. Second is hand stuff. <laughs> third is mouth stuff. And fourth is, well, you know what fourth is. There are four bases? Home. Home plate. Oh. First base, second base, third base, home. Yeah, I don't follow baseball, but <laughs> okay. Okay, so they they go, they take this roundabout way into talking about sex and consummation, which is they, they use God, 
they invoke God's name. Mm-hmm. And they're and Miguel's like, when we have sex, will God be looking? Will he be grading us? Oh, sure. She'll be screaming his name, hopefully. <laughs> but I hope he's not watching. But she does. She goes back into talking about her religious upbringing and talking about abstinence and talking about this shame and guilt she had because she couldn't hold herself to that standard. She banged her ex, I guess, in college mm-hmm. before marriage. I, I wonder, and we don't have this answer unless I missed it. Did they bang when they were engaged or did they bang pre-engagement? Because I'm giving them a pass. If they I bang when they're engaged, I'm giving them a pass. I know I'm, I'm not God, but I'm giving them a pass if it's an engagement bang. I don't know. That's all I'm wondering. But so she's like, yeah, there's, it's a lot of guilt, a lot of shame. And that's why I'm taking my time now. Yes, well, Miguel is not taking his time because he's like, oh, you're so tense. Um, should I give you a massage? Oh, She's like, yeah. sure. Basically, he's massaging her while poking her, poking her with his boner. Yeah, he fully mounted her. It was a poke massage. Mm, yeah, he was like, is that a banana in my pants or do I have monkey pox? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a monkey joke. Um, yeah, he's, he references banana, and uh, it was very sexual. Yeah, he I like think. unbuttons her bathing suit, unhooks her bathing and suit. And he said to the camera, he goes, make sure you guys get this boner. Someone's oh, been spending too much time God. around Justin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's all. On one that. hand, he's so, ooh, I'm big yeah. games, I just want love. On the other hand, he's like. He's get this like, boner yes. on camera. Boner cam. Okay. Next. Next. Stasha and Nate. Wearing their matching hubby and wifey shirts. Okay. Nate needs to stop being an influencer or want to be influencer. It's like, a wannabe. He like, not even that, but the whole vibe about, oh, you have to look good. I have to look good. Like, come That's on. That's fine. Especially because you're on national television which ladders up to my other point about the influencer thing if you guys didn't watch they're going atv riding they're yes. right they're taking an adventurous ride on some atvs and nate is filming himself the whole time he's taking selfies he's left stasha in in his dust and he's mm-hmm. taking these selfie videos and live streaming and who knows what but i get you want to look good you're on camera but you're on camera if I had a professional camera crew following us around, the last thing I would be doing is filming on my phone. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, send me a copy of this when yes. you're done shooting. I don't need to be filming this. I could be enjoying the moment. No, but this whole thing is like him talking about Stasha. Like, yeah, like she has to like take care of herself. Yes, that's good. Like I want you to take care of yourself. You want me to take care of myself too. Am I going to talk about it to the, whole, to the whole world? I mean, I think it sounds so so super no superficial. On whose part? Nate's part. Stasha's the one that takes two hours to get ready. Yeah, it's like you. <laughs> How dare I'm you? Kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, but yeah, I don't know. This whole relationship is very much on a very surface. Super, very, yeah, very surface relationship. It's very surface. And the worst thing was that. Stasha was like, yeah, I've never done ATVs. This is going to be a great test. Let's see if he's going to take care of me, if he's going to wait for me. Meanwhile, she's struggling to put a gear on. Right. And from, there is Nate in the background uh, taking selfies. From Not minute saying, one. Yeah. Hey, babe, are you okay? Like, oh, excuse me, sir. Can you help my wife? I don't know how to do this. Or she doesn't know. Or help her yourself. You're taking selfies in the background while yeah. this other man is trying to help her. And then you just take off. Yeah. And... I'm happy people are being their authentic selves on camera, but I always go back and I think this is a first impression situation. I know you guys are married and you've known each other for a couple of days, but you, you're still, you should be on your best behavior. Yeah. You're still making a first impression more or less. And this is the first impression he's making. So either this is authentic, this is his authentic self or he's way worse mm. when he's comfortable or when the cameras go away. And this is actually him on his good behavior. Either way, it's not good, but you would think, oh my God, I'm on camera. This is my new wife. I'm mm-hmm. going to do everything I can to be the best husband there is. No, he's left her a mile behind and he's taking selfie videos. Oh yeah. Well, let's see how this relationship is going to end up because 
They finish the ride, they're chilling after, and Stasha says something that I totally agree with because she says, there has to be a balance between like recording yourself and being on social media and actually enjoying the activity. She says a balance between single life and married life. Yes. And Nate can't comprehend this. He's like, I can't just flip a switch. I'm, I'm transitioning. I mean, the, explain that to me, Nate, because it's pretty easy. You don't flip a switch, you flip your phone off and you yes. say, let's just enjoy this moment. Or take a video, live video with your wife. Yeah, include her. Yeah. Or if you're this much into videography and capturing moments, get a GoPro, wear it on your head. Yeah. And just film all the time and cut it down and edit it in post. But yeah, I don't even think of this as a single life, married life. No. Uh, debate it is just selfish or an instagram influencer wannabe yes versus living in the moment and appreciating and enjoying what's around you currently yep so i uh, i'm team stasha here i get why she'd be upset yes and then we see they're getting ready for dinner and as john said stasha takes about two hours nate takes 30 minutes but I get it. Girls got to put makeup on. Takes me a while to. At least she said, if I'm just running to the store, 15 minutes. Yeah. I don't same. know what you're doing for 15 minutes. It takes. I mean, same for me. You brush your teeth, you brush your hair, you put some clothes on. Come on. Okay. Takes so, you 15 minutes too. Not if I'm going to the store. If I'm going to the store, I'll go how I am at that moment. No, you don't. If I'm running to. We change our clothes. I'll change my shorts. We have home clothes, guys. If we're going to Sprouts. I'll wear whatever shirt I'm currently wearing, put on normal shorts or pants instead of mesh shorts. I'll run to look in the mirror to make sure my hair is somewhat presentable, and then I'll leave. It's a three-minute activity. True. But, it, okay, at least if she was saying she takes 45 to go to the store, we'd have an issue. 15 is fine. Yeah. So they go to dinner, and Stasha says, I had a moment. I talked to my mom. She was checking in on me, and she asked how I felt about you. Because she thinks you're great. She thinks you're perfect for me. But. But. but she mentioned something about bankruptcy. Yeah. Oh, did, you, uh, did you Michael Scott and declare bankruptcy? <laughs> or did you really declare bankruptcy? I declare bankruptcy. Michael, you can't just say <laughs> <laughs> you declare bankruptcy. And so Nate explains once again. He was running this business that he funded with his money and they had to file bankruptcy, messed up his credit cards. That's why he moved to San Diego to get that restart. But he says it's all clear. Moving forward, it's all good. It's not going to affect us. Okay, well, that's good. But I still want more information. He he never really gives information. No. What was the business? Think, why did it fail? I don't, I don't think it's because he said this was six months ago. Yeah. You can cannot you? get over a bankruptcy. At I don't least, know. We don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. Absolutely, we don't know. But I feel like the word bankruptcy is very scary and it screams time and repair, yeah. right? And I, I mean, maybe you can do it within six months. I literally have no idea. But I think go from filing for a bankruptcy to living your best life again. I don't know how that's possible. But if it's possible, good for him. Yeah. Again... I think I said it was Steve. It, maths is a great situation to be in. Yeah. If, if you are bankrupt or you're in debt or you don't have any money because you're going to get put up in an apartment for two months. Mm. Then you're going to be married to someone and you could say, well, let's just move into your place. And so for people who aren't financially stable, maps is a great option. Well, maps won't. They, they, they're doing the background checks. They want to make sure that. I'd be you interested have, how deep they go into financials. I'm, they I do think you, you have to. I don't think they would match. So, although, remember there was this one couple. I forgot which city. I'm going to say Dallas, maybe. But that one couple where the guy said he's like a principal or something, oh, making yeah. 80000 Meanwhile, he was not. He was that was lying. amazing. That was, that was some of the most entertaining television. Just jaw-dropping television. Where he's just lying to her oh face. Oh, my gosh. Everyone's face about these job offers he's getting and how much he makes, but he's not taking him because it wasn't a real job offer. That was unbelievable. And I, she stuck with him, I feel like, the entire time. Well, but she was over it. She, yeah. I think she just played the game saying, I signed up for this. Let's finish this strong. But she's like, 
I don't want to be with him for a very good reason. So I'm sure they they definitely got criminal history. They probably scour your social media. I don't think they're asking for bank statements. I would be surprised if they asked for bank statements. I mean, criminal history. Let's not forget about the girl. Who, nah. Was she from? Okay. Well, I'm now thinking Dallas for everyone, but the one who was um, who had a restraining order against someone was stopped yeah. at the airport, like. Maps. Yeah. I don't think maps goes that deep oh, now good. when I'm thinking about good it. Good for us. Makes for more interesting <laughs> characters. Absolutely. Anyway, long story short, Stasha thinks they should get a post nup because of this. And maybe she was thinking of it regardless. But oh, after- she talked about it before she got married. Yeah. But, with her mom. But now that she finds out about the bankruptcy, she's definitely like, I think we should do a post nup. I think all couples on MASH should have a post-nup. Absolutely. You don't know who you're marrying. Absolutely. You have no idea. Get a prenup, get a post-nup, and get a is, mid-nup. Yeah. Nate is like, dang, you don't have faith in your boy. You don't have faith in your boy? But Stash? he was like, you know what? If it makes you comfortable, I understand. I'll, I'll sign it. Which yeah. was a good answer because, again, they just met. Yeah. Yeah. And then the kids' conversation. Okay. They want to find out where each other is on that topic. And he asks Stasha her timeline for kids. And without missing a beat, ask me, when do you think you'd want to have your kid? When do you think you want to have One your year. kid? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. To be fair, and I can I cannot put myself in her shoes, but if you are 37 or 38... And you're very successful in everything. And all you're missing in your life is a husband and a kid. Now you got the husband. I get the timeline because she's TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. She's So if she was 30 I mean, and said one year, I would be like, whoa, like take it easy, get to know each other. But I, I get this. No, she's right in that timeline. Yeah. So that's not surprising to hear she wants a child in a year. It is for Nate who thinks two to three years. And then on top of that, he goes, you know, two to three years, and it has to be the right person. And Stasha goes, we're married. Uh, there, there is no more person anymore. Yep. It's either me or no one. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean, right person? Oh, Nate. So that's where that couple ended. Do you uh, think he's into her? I think he's into her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, for sure. I, I think they're into each other. Yeah. I think yeah, I think they make a nice couple. I think they could be that power couple. Yeah, that's all Nate wants. They just need to figure out some of these other details. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, some of the wackiest and wild couples of this season. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back in a second. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Teresa. How is that bloody Mary? It's pretty, pretty, pretty good. But these pieces of little peppers getting stuck in my straw. I'm struggling here like a turtle. I was looking at your glass and going, wow, she is really taking her time with that bloody Mary. I'm like trying to sip through. Hold on. What the, is it the peppers from the mix or you didn't add I think so. It's good. I think think you should get something stuck in your straw for every cocktail you drink because you're actually drinking it at a responsible rate. It's also very spicy, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like bloodies, but the more you talk about the spice, the more I'm curious yeah. about it. I have to say, I did love this mix at first, yeah. but it has a little, it's good, but it has a little sweet aftertaste. And I think one of the peppers Ew. are sweet. Should I give it a taste? Give it a taste. Do, a little, do it. A little do live it. tasting over here. All right, let me... John is about to try oh, a blood, bloody Mary. I probably had, I'm, well, this will probably be the third time I've ever tried a Bloody Mary. And I'm not joking like, when I say it's spicy, I hate, so careful. I hate tomatoes. Let me first smell it. You love ketchup. It smells tomatoey. Let's try this. Yeah. Yeah, that's more, um, it's definitely spicy. <laughs> do, do, do the sound. Do the sound. <laughs> that's going more tomato soup for me, which I actually like tomato soup. I, that's so funny. I hate tomato soup. Pretty spicy. I love tomatoes. Weird. I love ketchup. I love Bloody Mary. All right. But yeah, I don't know about this mix. It's drinkable, but it's not my fave. Oh, you told me you liked it more than the other one. No, I think I'll take it back. Oh, my gosh. All right. Trying something new. Life is an experience, John. I love it. Put that on a bumper sticker. Right? Okay. Let's talk about... Coming to our... 
a merch store soon. Okay. Let's talk about <laughs> Alexis and Justin. Oh my gosh. Who Ew, they're not riding here. ATVs, but they're they're riding something else. They're having an adventure of their own. They're going horseback riding. Beautiful horses, especially the one that looks like our old friend Tommy. It looks like our old friend Tommy. Not as beautiful as Tommy. Tommy's, Tommy's no, one of a kind. I wrote down this is Tommy wannabe. Hello, boys. Hello, hello, boys. <laughs> um, I'm sure this was Justin's idea to go horseback riding because he's like, let's see if Alexis can really ride a horse, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised he wanted to because, I mean, b- being on a horse, I don't know. It's just, it's funny, kind of. But if you think of all the jockeys, they're yeah. all very tiny. That's and he's very point. tall. That's such a good point. Yeah, he's like three jockeys standing on top of each other. Yeah. Chair. Yeah, I was looking to see if his legs were dragging next to the horse, but <laughs> they were not. Justin was loving it, though. He goes, ah, I, I manifested this. Oh, my gosh. Riding horses on the beach, holding hands with my wife. You read about this in magazines. Or this, this is what rich people this is what do. rich people do. So uh, over the top, so over the top, but they seem to be vibing each other. They can't keep their lips off each other. And Alexis even tells the camera, I'm usually cool, calm and collected, but I'm losing control. Yeah. I want to know how long that's going to last I'm losing because control. I think she's still in the honeymoon to, phase. Yeah. The honeymoon <laughs> no pun phase, intended. Getting, getting to know him, but the way he is like, I, I can't stand it. Like, it's too much. I love when John, when we talk, and you sometimes, once in a while, get a little emotional or show your emotions, say, right? We talk, you mm-hmm. you you can be cute. I can be cute too, but not all the freaking time. There's a difference between For being... For God's sake. There's a difference between being cute and being cheesy. And, and the, I manifested so this, riding ah. horses on beaches. This is in magazines. That's cheesy. So that's so cheesy. That's cheesy. But I'm going to I'm going to say this. Maybe Alexis and Justin are meant for each other because she's kind of wearing on my nerves too now with some of the things she's saying when she goes, "Justin just gives me this look. I can tell he loves me. He hasn't said it yet, but I can tell he loves me." Yeah. I'm like, "All right, maybe you guys are meant for each other because you guys are both a little over the top." I don't think she is. I just think she's being pulled into this and I think maybe this is what she always wanted mm. and now she has it she's like ew like oh my gosh I actually like it but I'm wondering how long can that last I don't know he gives me the vibes where you go out it's a tinder date you go out and you meet this guy and he's so over the top and you're like that was too much I'm gonna leave and never call this guy again but then he keeps messaging you and it's he's it's almost stalker. Like I'm getting almost stalker vibes where you're scared mm-hmm. to break up with him because he's so intense in the moment that you're like, well, he's going to be this intense when he's stabbing my body 92 times. Oh my gosh. That's the vibes I'm getting. And I'm not calling him a serial killer. I'm just not, not calling him a serial killer. <sighs> he's a serial creep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He needs to seriously chill. Oh my gosh. So it's so, so, so bad. But then we see him going to dinner, right? And this is where I just like died laughing. And we saw it in the previews. But this is where I go, oh, maybe they're right for each other. Because before what you're about to say happens, Justin goes, you have a nice view behind you. And Alexis goes, I have a nice view in front of me. And I'm like, ah, ah. Look, right, what she geez. does too. Oh, did you guys order nachos? Because here's a, there's a lot of cheese on your table. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis says, she's opening it up, right? And she's like, you're made for me and I need you. Ew, ew, ew. Right. Well, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, making... Uh, 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 uh. Which making makes it even no- worse. It's like, okay, at least if you want to be cheesy, be cheesy. Let us do the ew. Right. Oh, own it up. Own right. it up. Or don't be cheesy. Still let us do the ew when it comes to Justin. Yeah. But what are you doing? Right. Pick an emotion and stick with it. Yeah. So Justin goes... I know I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I know I want kids with you. No, he said kids by you. Oh, kids by you. What does he I mean? I autocorrected. Eh, not everyone's the best speaker like you, Teresa. Stop Some, it. I would never say John. Not, every, not everyone just speaks perfect English all the time, Teresa. John, I want to have kids by you. Um, maybe, he want, <laughs> maybe he wants to just have her watch while he's impregnating another woman. I want to have kids by you. <laughs> um, but he says all this stuff and Alexis goes, how do you know? Teresa, how do you know? 
he's like, Alexis, I love you. And I'm in love with you. <laughs> and Alexis starts laughing. She's like, excuse me. Oh, my fucking God. <sighs> and then he, he goes on. Like, she's like laugh. She's like dying laughing. He's like, he's like, can you see yourself falling in love with me? And Alexis is like, it's too much for me at this moment. It's too much. Justin's freaking crying now. Speaking of emotions. Here's what I always have to remind myself, though. He hasn't had sex in a year and a half. When, so, you ha- when you haven't gotten laid in a little while, you start thinking crazy things. You start doing crazy things. These are the actions in the words of a man who has not released sexually in a year and a half. And you do a lot of dumb stuff when you're backed up. And I so uh, you got to keep how it. How do you know? Yeah, if you, uh, if you go two weeks, you start acting crazy. Me? I'm saying anyone, oh. right? So imagine a year and a half. Mm. You got to keep it in context. This guy has not made love, had that sexual release in a year and a half. You're going to do some dumb things. You're going to say some dumb things. And I think this was pretty dumb. Do you think he like is being this extra or I know you said that he's exaggerating, but I think partially it has to be him. It has to be part of his personality. No, it is. It is. It's gross. But he's also, I think, going, oh, yeah, this is what ladies' men do. This is what the guys, this is what the cool guys do. And he's making that conscious decision to act that way. Whereas me, I might go, no, you know what? I'm not going to act that way. Maybe this is what you see on TV. Maybe this is is what the romantic people do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose not to. And that's my authentic personality. His authentic personality was to choose to do that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's really him doing it. But I think he's taking these cues, these bad cues. Oh, yeah. He's talking about, oh, my dick was so hard. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not normal. Let's not do that in a group setting. Yeah, no. He has no manners. And then he's too emotional. You're right. It's And we didn't even talk about that. It's like, it's very classless. It's very tacky. Mm -hmm, Very tacky. Right. So let's not even keep it in the terms of just, oh, it's too sexual or it's it's too mud. It's just n- no manners to be talking no about your hard dick ma- in a public setting. Yeah, no manners. But he closes this whole rant with, I truly fell in love with you at the altar. Oh. <laughs> and then he's crying. Oh, my God. He's crying on top of it all. I don't think he's going to get laid anytime soon. If a dude cries like this all the time and talks about, like, if he told me, like, I fell in love with you when I swiped right, I would be like, uh, and that's the point. Uh, excuse me. And that's the point right there is him saying, I fell in love with you at the altar. That negates the I love you that he just said. Because I, maybe people believe in love at first sight. I don't think most people do. But if you said, Oh, I love, I've, I've been in love with you since I saw you at the altar, then you, you, you don't love her. That's not what love is. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you just negated your I love you at dinner by saying, I loved you at the altar. He can also confuse love with instant attraction. Listen, if I haven't had sex in a year and a half, I would think I loved every woman I saw. (laughs) (laughs) He's in a vulnerable place, Teresa. Yeah, but I mean, it's his choice not to bang, so. He's he's in a vulnerable place. Well, hopefully she can do, she can do something about it soon. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about everyone's favorite couple. Kristen and Mitch. So Mitch was wearing the same hat that our six-year-old or six-month-old niece was wearing on the boat yesterday. Yes, I was thinking that too. (laughs) Yeah, they're going paddle boarding. But he's in his element. That's what he does, right? And they're having fun. This is all Chris wanted with Alyssa. It was just a fun, playful (laughs) paddleboard session (laughs) in the ocean. And and Mitch and Kristen are, are getting it. Yeah, so getting it, and afterwards, they're chatting about the process, and Kristen appreciates his passion for the environment because she asked for someone passionate about his career, which I understand. I yeah. This is one of the things I love about you, your passion, because it's tough to be dealing with someone who's passionless when you do have passion for something. That's the key part right there, though. If you hated your job, and I loved my job. Yeah. You'd probably hate me for loving my job. Probably. Right. So I think Kristen loves what she does. And so she probably wants someone who loves what they do. So then you can both 
have and I totally I totally get that I was recently asked by a person she was talking about her job right and basically kind of said yeah it's like nine to five you know like and I'm like okay but she was like but who likes their jobs yeah and I'm like I love my job she's like you do and that's very fortunate that's yes, so fortunate. it is it I is. would love the survey and you could probably look it up but I would love to know what percentage of let's not even go the world what percentage of America loves their job, really likes to love their job? Yeah. What would you guess? I'm going to say I would hope at least half of Americans yeah. love or enjoy what they do. I'm going to see if we can look it up. Percentage of Americans who love. You say you should say like. I think love yeah, is very powerful. Oh, whoa. 80%? This is sad. 30%? In the U.S., in the U.S., the United States, Teresa, <laughs> this percentage of employees are satisfied with their... This is a 2022 study. Okay. This percentage are satisfied with their jobs. Okay. You know the word satisfied. Yes. Hit me with the percentage that you think are satisfied with their jobs. 60? Whoa, Teresa was a participant in this study, I think. 65% are satisfied. What percentage are passionate? 40? 20. What? 20% are passionate. But that I get. Passion's a strong word. Passionate is a strong word. If you said what percentage are passionate about their jobs, I probably would have gone 30%. I, I would say I'm passionate about what I do. You're one of the 20%. Are you passionate? Absolutely. One of the 20%. That's sad. But at least 65 are satisfied. At least more than half are satisfied. We want yeah. people to be satisfied. Because they get it. Like some people... Might enjoy their jobs, but the jobs are tough. So it takes a toll on you. You can still be passionate about yeah. that. That's anyway, true. Anyway, they want Moving this. Uh, Kristen wants someone passionate. She got passionate. Kristen also wanted humor, which she believes Mitch has. And Mitch goes, yeah, I think you're funny too. I laugh at your jokes. And I think it's good that we both go for inappropriate humor because even sex is funny. And then he like starts laughing and he falls down. His paddleboard that's on the beach. Yeah. And I'm like, are these your jokes, Mitch? Because that's uh, definitely not funny. Uh, 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 sex with Mitch could be funny, potentially. If he's, if he's wearing that hat. Think about what do you think Mitch's dirty talk is? It's probably like how his dirty talk is like about pollution. Yes. He's uh, probably like, oh, uh, yeah, did, did you just litter? Oh, you better. Pay. <laughs> oh, did you just put a plastic bottle in the trash can, Kristen? You better get that out and put it in recycling. <laughs> That's probably what his dirty talk is like. It's probably it's probably hilarious. Sounds about right, but, probably, <laughs> but okay. then oh yeah. boy, then we see Mitch calling his brother, and he's basically he's like, you know, I can't totally see why the experts match us. Like she's great, she has the personality is great, everything's great. I love it, love it, love it. But oh, her butt. I what about her butt? Do not feel physically attracted to her. There is no physical spark. No physical spark. And he's like, I don't know how to overcome it. And I hate this because you just met. You're getting to know each other. You're having you're having a good time. Yeah. She somehow is okay with you being an asshole. She's somehow okay with all the weird shit you do, which is great. Like she's okay with all that. She gives you your space. She lets you go catch the wave and she does something else because she knows that that's something you like to do, right? She's great. She's understanding. Give it some give it some time. Why do you call this this early on? And and brother said, but you know, she's cute. And Mitch is like, Yeah, I'm not saying she's not, like she is. The way the brother said she was cute though was sort of a backhanded compliment. What do you mean? It wasn't like Mitch, you're not attracted. She's great. Like it was like, Oh, she's she's cute. Like she is cute. She's good looking. Yeah, she's I, more than, yeah. I, would, I would say she's more than cute. Yeah, she's an yeah. attractive woman. Matt's advice was terrible. Matt's like, yeah, you should talk to her. You should tell her this. Have some kind of chat. No. 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 You guys are not in the place as a couple to no. be having. There's not enough foundation there for you to go and drop this type of bomb Just on Just wait her. for it. Like, see what happens in a week. Like, you literally are on day four of the right. marriage, which is like day two of the vacation. Give it a, give it some time. And And another reason is because... You're going to tell her this? She'll never forget it. Yes. So make sure you're 100% certain about this mm -hmm. feeling before you tell her because 
she will never forget the oh, moment yeah. you told her you're not attracted to her. But even Mitch is pulling a Justin here, and he's crying too now. Everyone's oh getting so emotional. Gosh. What's in the water in Puerto Vallarta? Because everyone's crying. <laughs> well, we see the dinner, right? And they're talking about the day. Why didn't they go to dinner together? What do you mean? He was sitting there at the table. Well, we found like, out later. Mitch said, I appreciate that you were okay with me going to catch a wave. I think he oh, went I missed surfing. That. Oh. Yes. And I guess still, maybe. I know. I know. Still walked to dinner together. I mean, maybe she was sitting somewhere eating or maybe Mitch just changed his, himself on the beach. He still is all sandy because that's how he rolls. I was too distracted by the fact that that bandy is off. No oh bandy my gosh, alert. The bandy's off. The letting bandy's that off. wound breathe now. But yeah, Kristen, they're talking about the relationship and everything the day. And Kristen is like, you know, I want to advance the physical and the sexual department. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Mitch is gonna going to rip this band-aid off. Oh boy. Because he's like, Yeah, I wish I wish I was there. <sighs> and I felt so bad for her. She looked really nice. But he didn't but, uh, well, let's let's Really look at what he said, because that's not that bad if he's just, I'm not there. He said, I'm not there right now. I may not be feeling that physical attraction with you. He made it clear that it's yeah. not just like he's trying to pump the brakes yeah. like a Justin or like a Lindy. He's saying, I'm not there yet because I'm not physically attracted to you. And then he's like, that's not easy for you. He starts to put it on her and him. He's like, that's not easy for either of us. And oh, Mitch. But then he's like, I'm the one. It's, it's not you. It's me. I'm the one with the issue here. It's not you. It's me. And Chris is like, oh, yeah, I'm sure that was hard for you. And uh, I don't understand. But uh, I can tell when you look at me. I can tell when I when I see you looking at me, you think I'm attractive. Yeah, this was like, I bet, honestly, I get where she was coming from because you can tell. Like, you can tell. Uh, really? Be- when I look at Mitch, he looks like he's like smelling farts. His face always looks like he's in pain. Yes, but if you're having a funny conversation or you're laughing, you're having a good time, you're paddle boarding, there are these right. certain moments that he wasn't being Alyssa, right? He was right. just like, ew, right. I don't want to. He was like, trying. He's trying. He's there. And you do give the other person a certain look, right? Like It is there. That's how you, I can tell how much love you have for me, right? By the way you look at me, <laughs> yeah, you guys should see him right now. But I can tell when you're maybe a little mad at, mad at me over something silly because sure. it's your look, but it all comes with love. And I can tell because you have a way of looking at me. You have a way of being protective over me, right? And so I get what she's saying. I get what she's saying. More so than getting what she's saying, I was glad she had the confidence oh, yeah. to say that oh, because yeah. she does have confidence and yes. she should feel attractive. And so she's like, no, I can, I can tell when you look at me, you think I'm attractive, which is great. You're confident. And then she goes, I won't sit here and convince you I'm attractive or that I'm a catch. And I'm like, good, you shouldn't. And again, confident, yeah. which is, which is so yeah. important, especially in this dynamic. And now Mitch is like, I really appreciate how, how she takes it. This is great. And it's, it be- takes me back to, dude, you love everything about her. Maybe you love is a strong word, but let's say you love. She is easygoing. She's okay with your craziness. She's okay that on a honeymoon you go and you go and catch a wave. She's fine with it. She's fine with all of this. She's fine with your passion. She's fine with your band on your head. <laughs> the only thing that you like, you appreciate the way that how mature she is. Yeah. So it's the physical. And I hate that he said it. Honestly, he should have taken some time, at least the honeymoon. Let's get through the honeymoon and see that's if this grows because that's what happened exactly. to the OG couple. Yeah. That's when she got attracted to what's his face. It is. Ah, why do we have Jamie? Jamie and Doug. And Doug yeah. yeah. So yes. no. I hate it. I hate it. He had to be this honest. I wish Mitch seeks different counsel. I wish he didn't call his brother. I wish he went and he talked to. Miguel or talk yeah. to Nate even. and Or PC, call freaking PC. Yeah, call an expert. Why are you- Call an expert. Exactly. Why are you calling your lame brother if you can call PC yeah, or- tell her. Tell her how ugly she or is. Or DP and we have a bunch of new people that we haven't met yet, right? Terrible advice. Oh. Wait until the honeymoon is over. See how you feel. There, there was no need to- to drop that news on her this early. It, he'll, he'll never recover from it. Even if they have a great relationship from here on out- She's always going to remember that yeah. that beautiful oh, yeah. day they were having when he said, I'm not attracted to yeah. you. Yeah. 
So cut to later. Now they're hanging out by the pool. Doing shots. A couple of shots of tequila. And they cheers to having tough conversations and moving forward. And I'm so, yeah, like Kristen inspires me because she's so confident. Mm -hmm. She knows what she's got. She knows what she brings to the table. And on top of that, she's able to pick herself up after hearing a comment like she heard and be like, no, we're going to keep having fun. Like we're going to keep moving Mm -hmm. forward. I'm not going to let this ruin the vacation. I could go run off. I could go grab Alexis and we could have drinks. Yeah. But no, I'm going to keep in in 100% into this process and let's do this thing. And they have a nice romantic poolside date. Mm -hmm. But it confuses Kristen because they're eating strawberry, chocolate covered strawberries, watching the moon, doing shots. And even Mitch, Mitch is like, oh, I feel demotivated how she handles herself. Is that a word? And yeah, it's not a real word. But yeah, things are looking. Yeah, remotivate. And I'm like, why don't you wait, you ass? I know. Yes, he could have self-sabotaged that. And, and we'll he, find out later that he could have gone to a home. He mm-hmm. could have gone home. The whole home run. Oh, home base? Yeah, he could have gone to the home base, yeah. right? But because of his dumb comment, yeah. it didn't happen. See? See? I'm going to bite you. Yes. All he right. Took, he took that ba- bandaid off way too early. Yikes. All right. Um, he's licking his wounds. That's all I got. That's all I got. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Morgan and Ben. And let's get them. Let's get them to yes. Mexico already because I can't stand these episodes where it's seventy five percent honeymoon. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't care about the wedding. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm in, my head's in the honeymoon space. I don't want to watch a wedding. No, totally. So they're taking photos. They're having fun, doing funny poses, right? And at the reception, we find out that Morgan doesn't drink wine. She's a beer person, right? Yes. And they're talking about the Mau Thai because yeah, I think Ben is just she, afraid. She beat the shit out of her friend. But yeah. Her friend came to the wedding. And, and then we see too. them talking to their families. And basically, both moms are asking, do you want to have kids? Yes. Ben wants to have kids. Oh, Morgan yeah. says she's open to it, basically. She just kind of summarizes it to being open. Yes. And then her nosy bridesmaids want to know if they're going to bank. Asking right. Ben, are you going to bang tonight or are you mm-hmm. going to bang on the on the honeymoon? Like, are you, are you going to bang? Ben says, and we whatever learned that Morgan happens. can get a little nasty. Oh. Oh. And that's kind of the reception. Honestly, they they sped it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, they knew what they were doing. And yeah. then Sparkler send off. Yeah, beautiful. Back to the hotel room, sit down in the living room to talk. And they're both vibing each other. They say things yeah. are off to a great start. They change for bed. And this is like the only funny part of this segment was when Morgan spots a huge bowl of condoms. Huge bowl of condoms. And Ben is like, oh, cereal? Are we having cereal? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, she gets, she removes all her makeup and she's like, you know what? All my skin issues are all about hell. I mean, that's me. Let's just, let's, let's yep. be, let's be me. I loved it. And then she comes back to the room and she's like, well, you have a preferred side. And Ben is like, no, really. And she goes like, well, you're already there where the condoms are. So uh-huh. I'll sleep on the other side. And Ben tells the camera, tonight is my birthday. So if my wife is open to giving me some, uh-huh. I, I can't turn down gifts. Ben's not prepared to share his gift yet, though, because he said he's going to hold in his farts. Oh, so, my gosh. What a gentleman. He can what start filling gentleman. up those condoms. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> McBloon, McBloon animals. Ew. Anyway, morning. They um, have a Morgan has a dessert cake for Ben's thirty. That was birthday. sweet. I like that a lot. Yes, and apparently it's something he likes. It was like this cookies and cream. Maybe yes. he shared that it was he like what he likes. I'm so glad they skipped the family brunches. Oh my gosh, I, I think, hate those. I think that's a lesson just for all seasons moving forward. Let's skip the family brunch. It's so boring. It's so boring. But what I loved about this segment that it got real in a way that Ben is having this testimonials. Meanwhile, she hears it and she kind of gets into it while talking about sex. So let's discuss. Do we think they banged? No. Oh, I think they did. You think they banged? Oh, I think they banged hard. I think they went all the way to fourth base, Teresa. Some call it home. Maybe they ran around it twice. Don't they do it in baseball? I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, think they I, I, I think they banged. I think, I think they banged too. Because yeah, I think they banged for a multitude of reasons. One being we see previews yeah. where Morgan's upset that Ben spilled the beans, some the beans. sort of tea. And I think that was the tea is that they banged. I think this could have been the night because they uh, they towed the line of of 
saying what happened. They didn't, but you could see that that postcoital glow on their faces. Oh yeah, I think so. Again, they skip the family brunches. They pack. They head to Mexico. Cut to the group hang. Cut to Do Mexico it. where everyone's together. And look who it is. Ben and Morgan, Morgan and Ben arrive. Woohoo! So the group hang is a boat ride. It's right? a booze cruise, Teresa. It's a booze cruise. The they fat get on. Cat. They get. Well, that was the name of the boat. Oh, it's a terrible that. boat name. It is a terrible There's boat name. We threw out Aquaholic last week when we were talking about oh. boat names. That would have been a better name for a booze cruise, the Aquaholic. So good. Speaking of Fat Cat, there was a bar in New York that was called the Fat Cat. I think you no, I thought it was the Fat. Oh, I was going to say Fat it was the Black fat cat. Pussycat. It was like, was it? I think it was Fat It was like this pussycat. game room downstairs yeah. in the basement. It was the Fat Cat. Just the fat cat? Yeah, I mm. went there when I was 20. I got a fucking ginormous stamp on my oh. on my hand. Look at this, Teresa. They closed. They reopened as Cellar Dog. What? From fat cat to Cellar Dog. Much better. Yeah. But I went there when I was 20, right before I turned 21, with my old pair of friends. I got this huge stamp on my wrist that I couldn't drink. Yeah. And then the bouncer saw me drinking a beer, so we got kicked out. Oh. Mm-hmm. We, um... Ted and I, my friend Ted, when we were like 19 or so, we went down to New York City one summer. We got fake IDs. Yeah. Shout out to McDougal Street. And they let you choose your state that you want to uh -huh. be from. The only state that would swipe, because, you know, some places they'll swipe. Yeah. The only state that would swipe, it would swipe Colorado. So he said, give us Colorado IDs. It'll match when it swipes. Yeah. And we got them. Took the train. Went out to bars in New Haven. There's this one bar. It was like a college bar. And they said, yeah, you can get in with fake IDs here. So we said, all right, let's try. We went. We got in. Oh. But the entire night, the bouncers and bartenders kept calling us Colorado. Oh. Because I think they were on to it. They're like, hey, Colorado, what do you want now? Like, <laughs> So I think they were on. I mean, who's in a New Haven yeah. college bar from Colorado? I guess kids from Colorado. I mean, the schools, New Haven, but. you have Yale. So, yeah. I'm sure the kids from I think they knew we did not go to Yale. I think it was pretty clear <laughs> we were not Yale students. But anyway, that's our young drinking story. Nice. Um, so they're on this fat cat. They're on the booze cruise. They're on the aquaholic. Mitch is looking like a classic dad on vacation. What classic was he wearing? Classic Mitch. I thought if you thought the hat from the stand-up paddleboard session was bad, this vibe was not happening. Was this he wearing was, like a Hawaiian shirt? It's like a Hawaiian shirt with an Indiana Jones hat. It was out of control. But I, I like died laughing. I don't know if you picked up on this, but Justin is like, look, guys, whale. Whale. <laughs> but he's the, so tall that he was the only one who oh, saw yeah. them for a while. Yeah. And then he didn't the have to go got, to the crow's nest to the see The whales got closer and they're like, oh, whales. Beautiful whales. I, I love whales. And Lindy was getting emotional over the whale. I would probably, no, I would not. It, I would get emotional over seal. seals. Yeah. So then Alexis is talking to Morgan and Ben, wondering how things are going. And they say, oh, it's been great. And Alexis once again is like, he's that bad. And I know. She dies laughing. Uh, he, she needs to stop. It's not her <laughs> story to tell. No, but it's I'm sure he to told break. everyone by now. Uh, and then Justin's like, oh, once I break my celibacy, just you wait. Just, he's going to blow like the sperm whale we just saw off the yeah, side yeah. of the boat. Yeah. That was not a sperm whale. It worked for the joke, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Did you say because I just showed you a photo of a sperm whale at the Where? brewery we went to yesterday? Oh, that, that was, was this photo of a sperm whale and a manatee having a beer. No, oh, yeah, I mean no. a photo, a painting. <laughs> 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 that was a sperm. I was no. like, I was like, John, that's a sperm whale. Okay. Because I don't think you're really good at I whales. I said sperm whale because it worked for the joke. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, guys. Anyways. Do it again. No, it's no do it again. No. Do it again. All right. Do so it again. they were talking, and Alexa said how celibate he was. <laughs> And then Justin goes, well, once I break my celibacy, just you wait. And I said, he's probably going to blow like that sperm whale <laughs> that was in the water. Love it. All right. Love it. So then we separate boys group, girls group. And let's start with the girls. Yes. They're chatting about last names and Stasha. And this is where her confidence comes from. And I love it because she's like, I'm ready to change my last name. I have no attachment to my current last yeah. name whatsoever. I don't know my dad. He's never... Mm -hmm reached out to me and she's like, even if we divorce, I will still keep Nate's last name. Barnes because or bust, baby. Yes. Yeah, so and I get it. That could be her new identity. Even if they divorce, she can still be like, you know what? We did this. We tried. 
I'm moving on. This is me now until I meet someone else. And it was a beautiful moment. And then Alexis kind of ruined it when she said, I'm like you, Stasha. I'm all in. Even though I know my father. Yeah. Ooh. But she apologized. I can't, she, it just came out wrong. It did. But I think she, she realized that immediately. Oh, yeah. No, she, she was not yeah. trying to No, offend. and I loved it because as someone who also says shit once in a while that oh I sometimes do speak before I realize what I say. John knows it and I appreciate his tiny hints, <laughs> but I can also <laughs> apologize right away. And he loves when I do it because he knows I'm not coming from Just a bad place. Just own up to it. It's so much better to be and like, I oh, do. my bad. You don't think I do? I'm not saying you. Oh, I'm oh, speaking yeah. in general. Just, yeah. People just need to own up. Stop digging your heels and you're going to look like a bigger person if you're just like, oh, shit, my bad. I didn't realize what I was saying. Yeah, no, totally. If you start to defend yourself, oh, I didn't mean like Stop it. Just own up to it. Yeah. And Alex is dead and yes, they hug it out and they're completely. getting emotional, but it's it's beautiful, right? And then <laughs> the old ladies are like, Stasha, the chemistry between the two of you is unbelievable. Oh, oh, oh. Is that what you're referencing? Yeah. Yeah, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they say insane, but doesn't oh. sound as powerful. Oh, don't unbelievable. lie. Unbelievable. No. Um, okay. Then a little of the guys hang. Mm-hmm. Justin somehow feels the need to be like, I know it's only been a week, but oh my God. told her I loved her at dinner last night. <laughs> well, wait for it because, well, hold on with the guys. Hold off. Okay. Guys. We found out that Stasha and Nate, they have not banged yet. Right. Right. But then we hear Kristen saying, I'll share with you guys, but uh-huh. I'll share with you girls, but I don't want to spoil the day. This is too. This is too much. I don't want to talk about when the boys sat on the on what? this boat. And she's like, "I'll share with you." But when we are alone and we have the time, and I appreciate it because on one hand you could think, "Oh, why is she sharing?" But on the other hand, we're all gonna watch it on TV. The girls are gonna see it on TV. What happened with Mitch and her, right? Yeah. So I think it's okay that she wants to share with the girls yeah. and get some support. But here comes her maturity once again, saying, "Let's not spoil the day." Let's not do it with the guys on board. Like yeah. It could be could get awkward, but I'll talk about it tomorrow. I just thought that she was like, I'll tell you. And when I do, you will be shooketh. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you know how to you know how to tell a story. Oh, yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cliffhanger. So now we are seeing guys chatting, as John said, Justin just being freaking Justin. Sa- says, oh, I told her I loved her. And Miguel's like, wow, that's a huge milestone. <laughs> <laughs> and then Nate is like, uh, nope. well, Nate tells the camera, I think he's a little too excited, yeah. which is, that's a perfect way to put it. He's very excited. He's overexcited. He hasn't yeah. been late in a year and a half. He, he, it's just a lot is coming out all at once. And you can tell everyone, all the guys are probably just laughing on the inside. Oh yeah. Like, really? Really? Oh, you, told yeah. you, you told me you loved her. Um, and then you cut to Alexis talking to the girls, just the perfect edit of, yeah, I wanted to run when I heard that. Yeah. So well, she should have. Miguel's <laughs> telling the guys, I'm very attracted to Lindy, but I wish we were having sex. And Nate's like, well, the sex will be more meaningful when you get to know each other. Yeah. And Miguel's just this horn dog's like, I'm willing to have mediocre sex until we get to know each other. <sighs> but you know what? At least he's being himself. Again, if that's who he is, yeah, then it's fine. And I think that's who he is because he's been like this since, since we met him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So... We we may say, ew, geez, Miguel, keep it in your pants. But if that's him, go for it. That's, that banana's about to break through that. It's much better suit. than whatever Justin is saying. So Yeah. Well, um, back to Mission Kristen. Uh, so this is off the boat now. Yes. We, we close this episode with a Mitch and Kristen one-on-one. Getting a massage and chatting afterwards, right? Yeah. And Kristen is like, she had a good time, but... Last night, talking about last night, she had a good time, but they did not bang. She goes, yesterday was a roller coaster, but I will say I was very happy last night. And when we went back to our suite, it meant a lot that you made a move. You're a good kisser. That was a good time. However, and men listen and pay attention. However, had you been attracted to me from the first second and then made that move last night, we would have gone further. Oh, yeah. See, he cock blocked himself. Yeah, that's what I said before. And she goes like, and I absolutely get it. And I, I'm i so happy that she has the balls to talk about it being this calm because she goes like, I want to feel wanted. Mm-hmm. Like, 
if I felt wanted, we could have gone farther. And I think she felt wanted at the moment, but was confused because of what happened earlier. Yeah. Therefore, she's like, I'm not just going to bang you because we're in the mood after what you said. Like that which is doesn't great. feel right. Yeah. Which is, which is awesome. And he respects that. He's like, I respect it. And Mitch doesn't deserve it because he tells the camera. He basically says, I was drunk and horny. And that's yeah. how I wanted it. But he goes, I'm a guy. I got hormones. It's like, so you're just saying, yeah, you're not, you're still not attracted to her. You don't feel a connection to her. You're just drunk and horny. So you wanted to bang. So I'm glad he didn't get it. Yeah. He didn't oh, deserve no. it. He didn't deserve Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I love that she comes up and say this and it's a little too forward for my taste. But when you think of this experience and think of what Mitch just put her through, I think it's good. She said it because she goes like, the only crusher I'm going to put on you is that if I don't, if we don't bang or I don't have, I love you from, I don't, I don't hear I love you from you by decision day, I'll ask for a divorce. See, I thought that was, that's my only negative mark I'm going to give her. Well, I don't think she would say it if Mitch didn't put her through what he did. But think about what she just said. I'm not going to say yes if we don't have sex or here I love you. So sex and I love you are two I very different things. I think she meant both. I think she wants both the emotional and the physical connection by decision day. I hope so because if you're just... No, I think if that's, you're just waiting for sex and then no. all is well. No, I, no, I think that's what <sighs> she meant. I think she meant to say, I want both. I want the physical and want the emotional. And yes. I love you. Because honestly, I get this. This, this pr whole process is on speed, right? It's on speed. Maybe I love you might be a little harsh, but if he said, I'm falling in love with you, that is the feeling, I would still take that, yeah. right? But I would want some assurance too. Otherwise, if he's being Mitch saying, I'm not attracted to you by decision day, why would you say yes yeah. to keep all these people who are unsure, but say, let's try it afterwards. Let's see mm -hmm. if we can get there. No one gets there because there, the decision day is two months from the wedding day for a reason, because within two months, you can either build a certain connection that can make it work moving forward, right? Or you don't. Yeah. Yeah. And all the successful couples did say it by decision day. Of course. Well, no one said no. Yes. Oh, you mean I love you. Yeah. All yeah. the couples who made it made this express. There was one in Atlanta when they didn't say it to each other, but they were, she stayed with him. I think he was into her. He was this guy who owned like um, tutorial centers oh, for yeah. kids. yeah. And she didn't say it, but they stayed together. And then we saw like a couple of weeks later, like a throwback and she finally said it. Yeah. I think they're still together. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree mostly with what you're saying, but I also think there is an element to once the cameras go away and we're living our day to day, maybe something could come and grow out of that. Once the pressure of being on TV and shooting this show goes away Absolutely. and you can focus on you, I think there's a chance for love to grow. But yeah, most people yeah, and say I, I love you. A lot of people do this without thinking that they they are being filmed. And with Katina Olajuwon, right? Olajuwon's lucky that Katina just watch. She most likely watched whatever happened on TV and just kind of rose with it, saying, "Oh, he changed," right? Right. But for other people, it ruined the relationship when the guys or the girls heard what they yeah. were saying during these testimonials, saying. Jesus Christ, you said this on a national TV. I, I can't, I can't be married to you. Yeah. So you, I think people should watch what they say because. No, you, no, no, no. Be authentic. Be your authentic self. Oh be no, abso self. absolutely. But thinking that you say something on TV with during those testimonials, but you don't say it to your spouse, like some people. Right. Well, that be open and honest, but don't be two faced. Yeah, totally. Okay. I think that's the episode. I think that's the episode. What an episode. We made it. We made it. We loved it. We hope you guys loved it. And enjoyed it. And enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, as long as you loved it, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you guys for listening. Make sure you guys are following the podcast wherever you are listening, whether it's Spotify, TuneIn, Stitch, or Apple. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you look down, you smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hot as my Bloody Mary. Woo! That is a hot, I tasted it. Oof. I can verify that is a hot 
Bloody Mary. Yeah. All right. You're following the podcast. Follow us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod for all the news, the memes. Message us. It's a good time at Married to Reality Pod. Thank you to all our patrons. We love you guys so much. Patreon. So much. So much. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. Therese and I cannot stop talking about you guys. That's how much we love you. And thank you again for the reviews. If you haven't left one, it'd be awesome if you could. And thank you in advance for that. All right. I've said it all. I've said it all. That means we will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.